60 Minutes Rewind. A lot's been said about Russia meddling in our 2016 presidential campaign. But the Russians are already buzzing about their presidential election next March because unexpectedly, Vladimir Putin has a genuine challenger, a handsome 41-year-old lawyer, Alexei Navalny, who has chosen one of the most dangerous occupations in the world, running against the man who controls the Kremlin. The election process in Russia is tightly managed by the government, but Navalny has been drawing big crowds to his protests and rallies all over the country, where he laces into Putin with no holes barred. Putin is a thief and the head of the entire corrupt system. This is one brave man, not only because he has taken on the all-powerful Vladimir Putin head-on, but because he's been holding rallies, many of them without official permits, which has had its consequences one arrest after another. Where's the Russia? During my campaign, I spent every fifth day in the jail. So now I'm kind of, you know, used to it. Nothing new for me. It's, it's became a routine of my life. You got out of prison just a couple of days ago. Right. You held a rally right away. I mean, you're, you're goading them. You're begging them to arrest you again. These are people who are trying to steal my country. And I strongly disagree with it. I'm not going to be, uh, you know, a kind of speechless person right now. I'm not going to keep silent. You're not allowed to run. I'm not allowed to run. And they put enormous pressure of our, on our headquarters and on our uh, volunteers. My uh, chief of campaign get out of jail just yesterday. So uh, all these uh, facts show us that he's really afraid, not of me, but these uh, people who are standing behind me. We have uh, now 170,000 uh, volunteers. Mr. Putin remains highly popular. It's all but a foregone conclusion that he'll be reelected. And yet the Kremlin is doing everything it can to make it difficult for Navalny to gain traction. For instance, the government says he can't be on the ballot because he was found guilty of embezzlement and what Navalny insists was a trumped up charge and he's barred from national television. But he's managed to get around that by reaching an ever-widening audience on social media channels and YouTube, where he has millions of followers and says he's raised almost $4 million from ordinary Russians. What do you think the biggest issue is for most people here in Russia? Poverty and inequality huge in Russia, even compared to the United States, the European country. No opportunities at all, no future for the people. Putin is stealing their future. And Mr. Putin puts his relatives, his closest friends, his colleagues from the KGB at the chiefs of this company. And that's why they're controlling the whole economy. Navalny began his public life 10 years ago in a shrewd way. He bought small shares of state-owned companies. As a shareholder, he was able to get his hands on internal financial documents, investigated evidence of misconduct, and posted it all on a blog. Did these documents that you got prove corruption? Oh, absolutely. I work as a whistleblower, and I'm not afraid to uh, announce the names. He says he found that the Kremlin's inner circle was accumulating vast amounts of wealth and published pictures of multiple homes and yachts. He moved on to airing documentaries on YouTube with video of the officials' lavish lifestyle. How did you get the oh, footage? Uh, we have our Air Force. Uh, we, we're just What's using here? drones. Uh, you uh, sent drones out? Yes, we do a lot of work with the drones because for, for us it's a best way to show this way of life. When you uh, publish this footage of the yachts, of these palaces, of these real estate, and uh, you, uh, you can show documents, look, this guy have a relatively modest salary, but look at this house. His most watched documentary, with over 25 million views, focused on Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev and his estates, Navalny says all five of them. The video inflamed so much outrage that in March, tens of thousands of Russians took to the streets. 
When Navalny called for a second round of protests three months later, he was arrested before he even left his apartment building. But his supporters came out in droves all across the country. And like Navalny, close to 1,700 were arrested. These were the first protests of this magnitude in Russia in six years. Back then, in 2011, roughly 60,000 went to the streets in a burst of anti-Putin dissent. That's when Navalny debuted in Moscow as an opposition leader. As we were watching in the United States, I think there was the impression that public opinion was going to force change here. It looked that way on television. But that is not what happened. Mr. Putin realized that his, uh, it's not affordable for his system to give people more democracy. That's why in the uh, 2012, he completely changed his strategy and uh, start to arrest people, start, start to fabricate criminal cases. Look, and at the uh, start of the 2011, I was a respectful lawyer. At the end of the 2012, I was several times convict. But now he's seen as the last man standing, since most of the other opposition leaders either fled the country or were found dead under mysterious circumstances. Why are you still alive? Uh, this is a favorite qu question of my wife. I don't know. Maybe they missed uh, the uh, good timing for it when I was less famous. Do you feel that your visibility, with so many people knowing who you are, um, that that's protecting you? Well, actually, I'm trying not to uh, thinking about it uh, a lot, because if you start to think uh, what kind of risks I have, uh, you cannot do anything. Navalny's platform includes more spending on education and health, restoring a free press, and taxing the oligarchs. In the West, he's assumed to be a Russian liberal. But there was a time when he marched with nationalists, some of them fascists, something he's tried to downplay lately. You have attended nationalist, what we would call right-wing rallies, uh, I believe in support of ethnic purity, Russian ethnic purity. Have you supported that? Uh, of course not. I uh, was part of these uh, rallies because I support the freedom of rallies, because I uh, support uh, freedom for meetings. Oh, they're supporters of yours. Uh, they're part a lot of, of your them. following. A lot of them supports me, and they recognize me as a leader. When he was growing up, he came from a committed communist family in a small town south of Moscow. What was your childhood like? I'm 41 years old. It means that actually I'm a guy from the Soviet Union. Huh? I was a young pioneer. I had my red tie. My father was a military. And I was very proud that my father is guarding Mother Russia from evil Americans with their bombs and missiles. Actually, my biggest memory that I'm, as a child, standing in line standing in line maybe sometimes for hours to just buy milk. The story will continue after this. He was close to his brother Oleg, seven years younger. So it was painful for him when three years ago, the government, to get him to stop his activism, he believes, convicted him and Oleg of embezzlement a ruling the European Court of Human Rights called arbitrary and unfair. To make matters worse, he got a suspended sentence, but Oleg is still behind bars. He's still in prison, and he spent uh, two years in this solitary confinement, which is uh, actually, in Russian condition, is torturing. And you think he's in jail to get you, to get you to stop? Yes, absolutely. But he hasn't stopped even though he's been physically attacked. While campaigning in Siberia, he was splashed in the face with green dye. It was painful, but I could... Uh, it hurt. It, it hurt. But he handled it with humor, saying he was Shrek. <laughs> His followers dyed their own faces green and posted photos to Instagram and Twitter in solidarity. Then he was splashed again. Second time was much more painful. There was acid 
as I understand it. My uh, doctor in the hospital said, well, Alexei, you should be prepared that you will be blind for one eye. And so I even start to think about kind of, you know, I will be such kind of pirate with the with patch. With the patch. The Kremlin did allow him to travel to Spain for specialized surgery, but immediately after the treatment, he returned to Moscow and went right out campaigning again. Uh, yes. but lately, he's been concentrating on rural areas, holding rallies far from the big cities in places like Siberia and the Urals. I'm traveling every weekend to spend Friday, Saturday and Sunday in the regions to have these rallies. On our last day there, we went with him to the mid-sized industrial city of Ivanova, four hours outside Moscow, starting with a train ride. Mr. Putin never, ever mentioned your name. May criticize you, but never your name. What do you make of that? I have no idea why they're doing it. Maybe it's a kind of something uh, superstitious for them. Like, you know, you, you, you cannot name the animal because if you name it in the night, it will come and eat you or something like this. And they ha have a lot of nicknames and euphemism for me, like uh, this gentleman, uh, this guy, this convict, and this, uh, this convict. Uh, this convict. Uh, but uh, they are thinking about me. And believe me, they are afraid of me, afraid of us. So it's, uh, that is much more important for us than mentioning my name. It was snowing and dark out when we got to a wooded lot on the edge of town where a big crowd of mostly young Russians was waiting. No one thinks he has much of a chance of beating Putin in the election. But still, Putin fears him, Navalny says, because of his ability to draw crowds at rallies and into the streets. He perseveres, knowing what he's doing is dangerous. His supporters have been roughed up by police and pro-Kremlin activists who Navalny calls thugs. Is it, in your mind, worth your life? Because there is a big target on you, no question. Uh, I'm trying to not to think about it. Because, look, I think I'm ready to sacrifice everything for my job and for the people who are surrounding me. I'm not let them down. And I'm trying to not to reflect about it all the time.